stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All board members are present. Principal and student rep information. Mrs. Stefanich, oh I'm sorry, let's, let's start with, with our student rep tonight. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. Uh, just uh, some upcoming dates, I guess. Prom. Prom's going to be on May 9th. And uh, theme this year is uh, can Candyland. Candyland. And then uh, we just got our, I just got the class shirts done. Those will be done by Wednesday. All the students are pretty happy to finally get those in. It's kind of my fault there. And then uh, senior class trip, that'll be on the 26th. And uh, they're going to be going to Valley Fair and Mall of America on the same day. We have the blood drive coming up. That's um, Friday, the 30th. And full roster there, so we got a good turnout. And then uh, physics, all the <coughs> physics Valley Fair trips going to be on May 18th. All the physics students will be going down there. And then uh, all senior ra senior radio nights on May 8th. And uh, Charlie Charlie. Ryan, Mark Tickenin, Sam Roberts, Sam Stanisich, Luke Rizinka, Jake Obi, Cora Bonacato, and Courtney Zadi will be doing that, so tune in. It should be pretty pretty good. And then uh, NHS had highway cleanup yesterday. And they were over on the highway going or the highway going to Gilbert and like the Sparta cutoff. And that's all I got. Good. Mm. Thank you. Mrs. Stefanich. <coughs> Um, we started up our MCA math tests today. Uh, that, that will run at the Franklin Monday through Friday this week with hopefully very few makeups the following week. But um, that will conclude our MCAs and then we have star testing next week. And that should conclude our benchmark testing and testing for the spring season here. Um, this Friday, our third and fourth grade has their spring sing in the auditorium here at the high school starting at 1 o'clock. Uh, May 8th. We have the third grade going to the aquarium in Duluth and the first grade going to the Lake Superior Zoo. And May 15th, we have the patrols and student council taking a trip to the Edgewater Park for the day and our second grade field trip to the Forest History Center. So that's about all I got today. Thank you. Mr. Haig? We have the uh, fifth grade going to the LEC, Laurentian and Environmental Center uh, Wednesday through Friday this week for their big fifth grade trip. Um, they also went to the Eveleth Mines last week, if you saw in the paper they mentioned <coughs> that, to uh, get a little tour and they watched uh, Mine Blast, which was pretty neat for them all. They, they were pretty impressed with that. Uh, seventh grade went to the Science um, Fair over at Iron World last week. Um, there was people from the Raptor Center and from the Science Museum of Minnesota along with people from the Tower Sedan Mines and several other places up here. Uh, junior High and Choir Band Concert tomorrow at 7 o'clock in the auditorium. Uh, and the MCAs have resumed with a day off from the state and they have seemed to have smoothed it out a little bit, so it's going well now. Um, and we have the D.A.R.E. graduation for the fifth grade on May 8th, 1.30 in the auditorium with cake and refreshments afterwards in the cafeteria. Thank you. <coughs> Visitor input, is there anyone who sure. wish? I got one more thing for you. Uh, oh, sure. Being that Ms. Sebo isn't here, I'd, you know, we, we send these folks on these various trips, so I thought we'd bring in uh, Mr. Burt with his, he's got a little presentation on close-up for the place of Mrs. Sebo tonight. Perfect. Thank you. Just a quick PowerPoint, just going to roll through some photographs. Excuse me. No, that's fine. So, and, uh, Stuff. 
There you go. You can move back in the morning if you want. Squeeze you now. Okay, so we had uh, 10 students go, along with one of the students was a para and a, uh, his mother went. So we had a total of 13 people that went to Washington. We left on Sunday the 12th, 7 o'clock out of Duluth, and we returned on Friday the 17th about uh, midnight. The kids <coughs> go with close up Monday and Tuesday. They have different activities. Uh, Wednesday we spend they spend with me at the Capitol. It's called Capitol Day, and we visit our legislators. There's Rick Nolan, one of our, our representatives. It happened to be the day that the Capitol locked down, so it was kind of exciting for them, as well as the Iraqi president was there, so security was real. <coughs> and on the other side of the building, the helicopter landed, so we didn't know exactly what was going on, but it was heavily armed. And that's the group with Rick Nolan in front of the Capitol. Uh, we were delayed because he couldn't get out of the building right away. He was locked in. Uh, I did want to thank the board and the administration for all the help and the, and the patience they had. We did a lot of fundraising. I know some people don't like fundraising, but the kids each had to raise about $2,000. They all accomplished it. And uh, every one of them on Thursday, the best thing I could hear them say is, we don't want to go home. We're not ready to go home. <laughs> they were having that much fun, met a lot of kids from all over the country, and uh, I think it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience that these kids will never forget. Coming from northeastern Minnesota, it's a great opportunity. So we toured around on that day. They were with me, and uh, it just uh, turned out to be a great trip. It was kind of interesting for them to see that dome. It's been under construction for about a year. And the plan is to have it done for the next inauguration. So it's under about 27 stories of scaffolding right now. This guy is a survivor. He was 14, 15 when he was taken into the concentration camp. So he spoke to the kids at the Holocaust Museum. <coughs> were up and running. It was really quite an attraction. The uh, National Mall is actually torn up right now. The reflecting pond is under reconstruction. The entire mall is being reconfigured. So it's a big area that you couldn't go into. So the kids had to do a lot of walking around. But that was okay. They had to be there on the anniversary, 150th anniversary of Lincoln's death, so all the flags at the Capitol were at half mass. Uh, a couple of our students with <coughs> Sherry room with twins from, I think they were from New Hampshire, in front of the White House. And then just some of the sites they saw. The kids sent me all of these photographs to uh, add to the PowerPoint. The uh, Vietnam War Memorial added two, they have the wall, but they've added two things since. One was for the soldiers and one was for the women, the nurses of the Vietnam War. That was, a, that was what that one was. And at the Library of Congress, there's a copy of the Gutenberg Bible under a real uh, humidifying storage. took the, uh, the metro, so that was an experience for most of the kids to do a subway ride. And the first day we were there happened to be the height of the uh, cherry blossom. We got out of the subway, we couldn't move, it was 
shoulder to shoulder people in the Nashville Mall area. Plus we had a wheelchair student, so it was really uh, a challenge to get the kids around. Okay, that's all I have. Thanks, Kev. Thank you very much. visitor input. Is there anyone in the <coughs> audience who wishes to address the board regarding a matter that is not on the agenda? I just have a question for Kevin. Yes. yes. How often do our students go out to close up? This is a two-year thing and actually we'll start recruiting again in September when we have the activities fair. So every two years we've gone out. Uh, some schools go every year. I talked to a couple of teachers. I talked to one guy who was there. This is 18th year there. Um, we had a pretty good group for a smaller high school. Uh, a lot of schools had five or six kids. So I thought getting 10 kids there at a starting group of about 27 showed initial interest in it with 10, which is about average for that number of starters. And what grades are represented by the group? Uh, we had mostly seniors. We had uh, one sophomore and one junior. Most of the seniors weren't doing that. They work hard and they get the, get all the fundraising done. It was a good job. I have one quick question. Uh, sure. Did you actually go through the uh, Smithsonian Institute? Um, we went through parts of it. It's it's kind of an interesting <coughs> thing. Uh, it's very it's interesting. It's a yeah. big uh, it's a big institution. Too. It's got several buildings. The one picture was the original building. It's the, <coughs> the castle, and then it goes from there. And I, I should have included the. Uh, one bit of the modern art, and I took a lot of shots from my wife. And said, this is art, you know, we can make a lot of money because it was one display, it was just a pile of rocks on the floor. Um, another one was a canvas with black paint. I, you know, I've done better stuff when I've kicked it over, yell it over on the floor. Um, another one was three rocks stacked up, two squares, one round, one night. I thought, you know, I could probably make a lot of money. <laughs> I'm going to uh, any other questions. I could run. So anyway, I, I do thank you for supporting the program. I think it's a great program. I hope to keep it going in, in school because the kids really learned a lot. Not just about Washington, but about getting out, getting out of their comfort zone. Um, the first night we were there, they were texting me, can we chart, can you check us out of here so we can go do something else because they were all, all the strangers. By Thursday, it was like they were long time friends. So it was a great thing. Okay. okay. Thank you. <coughs> Agenda changes and deletions. Uh, I only have one tonight. Uh, there's, uh, and it'll fall under consent agenda C. You see in front of you, you have a, a basketball. <coughs> Shoot away quote. What what the, the agenda changes? The basketball boosters donated the money to the school to purchase that. We're so the school will actually purchase this, but uh, the the money is being donated. So it's it's a donation. Mm -hmm. It's at the agenda. Seven point oh, approve the agenda. So moved. Support. Support. Shanlob and Gentilini. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Consent agenda. I'll move. We uh, pr approve the consent agenda. Support. <coughs> Young and Gentilini. Item A. Approve the minutes of the regular meeting of Monday, April 13. B is approve the treasurer's report for the second check writing of April. And C is approve the shoot away purchase and donation. Thank you to the basketball Thanks, boosters. Mr. As 
put that in the form of a motion, Keith, if you want to make a motion. I'll second oh. that and we'll send a letter of thanks oh. to we Make a motion and we send a letter to the bas girls' basketball mm -hmm. uh, boosters and very much of a thank you because it's going to be, it's going to help all of the, all the basketball players who are going to use this. It's just really nice. That's a nice donation. $6,669 plus tax, of course. But um, very well done. Nice. Yes. Thank you. Uh, that's the motion. Yes, and I seconded it. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries 9.0 personnel. 9.1 approved resignation of Christy Cummings. So moved. Support. Shanlob and Gentilini. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <coughs> 9.2, approve lane change request of Paul Brainerd. He's in a pre-approved program uh, working on his master's degree. And he's, uh, has, he has uh, completed the coursework to, to have a lane change. I'll move. Support. Young and Shanlob. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries 9.3, appoint alternate board member for the Rams board. I'll entertain a motion to uh, recommend the uh, director of Putzbo to be the, uh, the alternate for the Rams. And I'll support that. <coughs> Thank you. Any discussion? No, the only thing I would add is um, in the Rams organization, there's 40 some entities that are part of the, the group, uh, school boards, city council, fail township, uh, or not fail town, townships. And at the annual meeting and afterwards, there was a board of directors of 25 members elected from the various entities. And what this does is uh, have an alternate for each of those 25 del or members of that board. With the idea being the alternate can attend meetings to keep up with what's happening with the board. Um, the alternate would be a non-voting member, but in this case, if I were not at the meeting, then Mona um, would be able to vote at the meeting. Mm -hmm. That's the purpose of naming the alternate. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. With, thank you. <laughs> With that in mind, also, um, as a part of that, there is language within the bylaws for RAMS. I don't know if we ever formally uh, appointed Mark as our representative. However, he has been representing us um, aptly. Um, I heard a lot of nice things at the meeting the other night, so that was nice. Um, so do we I would like to do that just as a formality to make sure that we have that recorded if everyone's I'll make all right the motion with that. that, that uh, Mark is our, uh, our, our voting member of the Rams board. I'll support that. Any further discussion regarding it? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Thank you. 10.0, new business. Mona. Pardon? She asked me who supported it. I said you. Oh. 10.0 new business. 10.1 approve admin 1517 contract. I would like to see if we can uh, delay this portion just to go into closed session just to discuss what the changes were, if any, uh, and then come right back out and approve it if if they so want. I just I would just like to ask a couple questions on the contract before we go in. I've got no problem with it. I just... I oh, just because your board packet came late, you didn't yeah, have a chance to have, see it. Uh, those of us in Gilbert just got our board packets today, so I haven't had much of a chance. I came right here from work, so... <coughs> I wouldn't mind that also, because I... Last I heard that there were some things that needed to be agreed upon. 
Yeah, I haven't I heard a follow up to that yet. Yeah, I think they probably have from what I've understood. So talking. you want to just I just want to delay move it, it to 10.8? Uh, actually, essentially? yes, 10.8 sure. <coughs> or 10.7. And, uh, and then discuss it, it during 10.7 10 10 and then, then come back and take 10 action. 10.8, yes, please. Superintendent, do you know of any reason we can't do that? No, no issue with it? No. All right. And you made a motion to that effect? To is move it? it? Do we need one? No, we don't need one as All long right. as it, everyone's okay with it. All right. Does anyone have any objections? I suppose. All right, we'll just move that to the end then. Okay. 10.2, approved power school supplemental support contract. Superintendent Carey, can you give us a little update on that? Uh, well, Ms. Siebel was my point person on this one, but I'll try to get my way through it. Um, essentially, we have, you know, power school is our is our student management system that we use and, and when you initially purchase it I mean there are certain things we, we put our grades on there we have student or student information the contact information that we, we use it uh, not to its full capacity and in, in order to use it for its full capacity what I mean by that is we could be uh, producing report cards on that um, we can uh, our, our power announcements stuff like that uh, can be run through power school uh, there's uh, help me out Candace we have the <coughs> we have our, all of our lunch payments and stuff like that it can be modified to automate all that as well as our uh, our uh, the activity fees and what's the one that Denise was Carey, working on? how about our Versatrans program can that now yeah. be included in this with the, the yeah, our, our transportation program can be integrated in um, what was the one that Denise was working on? No, no, the, with the, we, we pay ARC to do it now. The STAR, the STAR data, yeah. So anyway, we, we, we currently pay ARC about $10,000 a year to, to manage our, our STARS data, whereas <coughs> we, could, we could program our own and do that ourselves, so there, there would be an immediate savings there. So, but anyway, what, what Marsha Brenner Associates would do is they can, they can actually program Power School for us to do that. We currently don't have anybody on staff that, that knows how to do that. So, so we're, we're looking at using them for about a year to, to automate more, most of our systems and, and integrate, so we're just all under one umbrella. Well, plus with that transportation program, we were getting real close to having to replace that, as I recall, just because of its limitations, weren't we? Yeah, we are... Uh, We've we've struggled with that for a while in its uh, in its capacities. So it would allow more people uh, input and, and access to that information. So we weren't dependent upon one person. And that was going to be what about forty five thousand? Yep. That's a good savings. So mm -hmm. you're saying that there would be an, an immediate savings if we mm -hmm. integrated this right. of that third party contractor? Right. All right. Go ahead. Um, the, you're asking us to approve tier two, right? Uh, for another hundred or seven hundred dollars, why not tier three? Uh, not necessary. I mean, it, the the difference, and I don't have my version in front of me here, but well, Tom does. I'll just steal Tom's <laughs> for a second. <laughs> I mean, the, the different the difference is the the seat licenses for webinars, the custom page support, port, upgrade installation. I mean, those those things are the same in, in tier two and three. The only difference is you get more service hours in tier three and we don't anticipate, and, that, and that's just uh, maintenance hours. And, and we, we do pretty well with that on our own. We have both Denise and Danette are, are capable. And then the other thing is the, the seat licenses for webinars, and we don't have that many people that would use it, so. Okay. I was just wondering, since the cost was so yeah, close, if there was any benefits, okay? Yeah. Well, I'll move that we approve uh, the Tier 2 contract uh, with Brenner Associates. I'll support. Moved by 40, support by Peterson. Any further discussion? Just so that's a good cost savings. I think so. Yeah. The transportation piece alone makes it worth it. Oh, well, yes, definitely. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Yeah. <laughs>
10.3, approve request for summer ADAPT program. Uh, every summer, our, our ADAPT program, they have a summer ADAPT program and they request the use of our facilities and, and the use of suburban. So it's, it's something that we have done in the past. And I would recommend that we continue. It's a good program. I'll move. So far. We have done this for many years. And yeah. It's a very good program. And they very much appreciate it. That was just expressed recently. Yes. Uh, motion by Young, support by Gentilini. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. 10.4, approve 15-16 equipment budget. So moved. Support. Moved by Shanlob, support by Young. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. 10.5 presentation from the Technology Curriculum Committee. Hello, <coughs> I'm Melissa Betzel. I'm Business Education here at the school district. And my friend here is going to pass out um, packets relating to um, the technology curriculum that we believe that we should pursue within the next year. Um, we, the Technology Curriculum Committee, met a few times this year, and unanimous, unanimously we decided that um, we would like to pursue a one-year license with Learning.com. It is a web-based um, curriculum that is used for K-8. It meets ISTE as well as um, MEMO standards. There is, um, it's compatible on all devices as well as obviously all computers. Um, if put on the iPads, the app is free. We see, we foresee no issues with it being compatible on the iPad for all use um, based on the fact that it is cloud-based. There's no uploads, there's no downloads. So the process should be smooth once um, the school license has been set. Now, um, the standards that are outlined in your packet, what we will be purchasing with this one-year license will equate to um, $7,500. After that one-year term, we will evaluate with the teachers that have been using it, and if they find it beneficial to their use, as well as to business education and to technology use um, with Paula Madden, who teaches at the elementary school, then we will look at pursuing a multi-year license. Um, if possible, if we see that it meets um, what our needs are. And what our needs are currently is that we have a strong foundation in the middle school and high school as far as curriculum goes, but because every year changes with what grade levels get technology education, we need something more standard. And this would provide those standards. What this curriculum covers from young to eighth grade would be basic computer skills, and then as they get older, it covers basic Microsoft programs, database, spreadsheet, Word, presentation software, web design, introduction to HTML, a lot of the supporting skills that students in the 21st century need for success out of high school as well as in high school. Um, in addition to this, the Easy Tech program is purchased along with Inquiry. So the 7500 is both of the programs. Easy Tech covers all the curriculum that I just mentioned that follows Microsoft programming, web design, and um, as well as HTML basics. Inquiry is a part of this, and what happens is that the teachers or whoever is instructed to teach technology will go through the Easy Tech curriculum, and following that, will go through Inquiry. Inquiry is a project-based um, design curriculum where basically they take all the skills acquired within that curriculum and they apply it to various cross-curricular projects. So in, in essence, they're using their technology skills to enhance science, math, social studies. So it crosses all borders. Now, depending on what is decided next year, as far as what grades are getting technology instruction and which aren't, this is very easy to use. So we are hoping to purchase a webinar so that we may invite all teachers in the elementary or most likely the elementary, and possibly the middle school. Maybe we weren't meant to have a window. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that uh, if the elementary <laughs> teachers want to participate on their own, want to have their own classes, do this on their own time, they will be able to do so. 
to our knowledge, it seems to be very easy and ready to use. Are there any questions regarding? Yeah. Yes, just looking through this quickly, um, I see web browsing is there for second grade. Mm -hmm. But when I look up at online safety, mm -hmm. that doesn't start until the third grade. Is there some reason that online safety <coughs> isn't introduced earlier? We don't necessarily know why, why that may be a grade differenti differentiation. But it just seems if, if they're going to have the kids getting into web browsing, there ought to be something <coughs> with online safety included. Just a, just a thought. Yeah. No, I fully understand. Maybe something to check out. Yeah. Thank you. So this is just a curriculum? Yes. This I mean. is an online-based curriculum for K through 8. And so basically whatever is decided year after year, because like for example in the past they've decided that okay this year is fifth grade is going to get technology education. Last year sixth grade got it. Well the problem that we're seeing is that there's no consistency. So if the teacher that taught sixth grade last year hasn't necessarily communicated with the new teachers teaching technology the next year to a different group of students, this would offer some consistency. So fifth grade gets this curriculum, sixth grade gets this, and below those grades will all be assigned their curriculum. So like uh, every one of our students is going to be on this curriculum? Is that what I'm getting, or am I missing something? So we can track they, them on what they did or didn't get? Based on what grades are decided, they get tra technology instruction. I don't necessarily know who that is, but every year it's decided that this year fifth grade got it, last year sixth grade got it, the year before, I don't know who got it. We're moving toward uh, next year K through 8. Well, well, if you're talking elementary, K through 6 would have it next year. So. Oh, I mean, is this something we need, Jeff? I mean, what yes, was very much. We, uh, we currently don't have anything <coughs> standardized is probably the best way to put it. And, and, and this would, uh, this would get us there. This would get us there. Yeah. Um, if you're looking for some direction what we should do tonight, I mean, this is, this is something I, I invited these folks in so that you would understand um, what it is they're looking at. However, we will, as far as approving, We'll, when we get to the budget and finance meeting, we'll see if it, it fits into there and if it's something that we want to do that way. Mm -hmm. And then it'll be approved. This is just later. information. Just a presentation, yeah. Okay. I did answer my own question. Oh. <laughs> looking, looking to the third page um, <coughs> where it says second grade in green, mm -hmm. uh, they do say students learn to use online safety, and, but they just don't have their chart update upgraded or updated but they do get into safety with the second graders mm -hmm. from from our impression of this program and our knowledge currently it is assumed that almost every grade level gets online safety that was like one of the proponents of the purpose of the program any other questions no. thank you thank you thank you, thank you very thank much you. <coughs> 10.6, approve increase in early childhood programming. <coughs> you have a uh, my recommendation in front of you. We are, we are looking at uh, a max increase on in, in school readiness threes of two full days a week and, and school readiness four or five, five full days a week. Currently, our current program, we do one two-hour session with school readiness three. <coughs> And uh, we do four. F we, we moved to four full days in, in school during this fours last year. Now within this, we realize that that uh, that doesn't fit everyone's needs. So we were working on building in some flexibility for folks, like if they wanted half days or only wanted a certain number of days, um, we'll, we can work within that. Uh, another thing, <coughs> another point to that. Uh, I met with. Uh, Skip Ferris last Friday is the director of Head Start. Um, of course, you know we, we, we do lease space to Head Start over in Gilbert right now. They <coughs> they also run a four and five year old program, as well as threes, but mostly four and fives that they have. And lots of the things that we would do 
our, uh, into this five-day program would be the same things they're doing. So what we're looking at is, is possibly pooling our resources and, uh, and integrating our programs. A lot of schools in, across the state are, are looking at doing that right now as early childhood expands. Uh, in, the, in the past, uh, Head Start has had um, somewhat of an advantage with the, with, with the folks that they deal with in that they have ex they've had extended days where, you know, just three years ago we only offered uh, two half days a week of, of school readiness four. So I mean, it was uh, if you if you qualified, it was way more advantageous for you to be in Head Start. Where that 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 gap is is closed with us expanding our program. So we're we're looking at, like I said, we're looking at combining, which which is going to reduce our costs significantly. I don't have an exact figure for you, unfortunately, because. Uh, ongoing talks with Skip, but he said by the end of the week he'll probably have an idea. But but the the numbers that are in front of you, as far as what what this expansion is going to cost, is more than likely not going to be that way. As well as I would assume down the road we're going to get some money from the state. There there seems to be a pretty strong initiative that that uh, legislator wants some type of universal four-year-old program. So. Um, <clears throat> but just in closing, I, I just, in order for us to be competitive regionally, uh, this is something that the school board is really going to need to seriously consider because uh, if not, we're going to get left behind. But what's the advantage going to the fifth day? <clears throat> we had two full sessions last. We couldn't even take any more from what I was told. <clears throat> and the cost for that fifth day is kind of great. It's significant, yeah. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? I mean, what's... How can we quantify that with just, I mean, we're going to be almost doubling costs by adding a day, right? Well, Do yes we know and no. more benefit? I mean. Well, the, the benefit is, is attracting our families to stay here, the ones that would take advantage of that. There are some that won't. And like I said, that's where the flexibility would come in, where we. But how many per sessions are we prepared to offer more than we did last year, is I guess. It, well, <coughs> if we, right now I'm, I'm looking at the two. If we, if we do integrate with Head Start, that would be an automatic three because they have they have one themselves. So, right. And we would split the cost for the three sections <coughs> between the two entities. Right. Correct. So that would well. knock down this <coughs> fifty-six right. nine <coughs> half maybe. I would imagine it would be half. Okay. Would it be almost beneficial to wait until we know in two weeks if the legislature is going to pass the school readiness thing? Would it be an easier pill to swallow? <coughs> I don't. I don't think we should because we. Uh, this is something that's it's happening around us anyway, whether or not the legislature <coughs> gives us any money or not. And, and I, I just I, I believe that if we're going to remain competitive, this is where, this is where we're going to attract kids right now. <coughs> well, is it, well, I just want a quick question. Is it right now? Is when everybody is signing up for all this? Yes. Signing up. That's what the, the rush is for. Yeah. <coughs> Well, it's not a rush, but it's it's a prudent. Well, we have to be yeah. timely to for registration. Timely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. <coughs> I mean, in our face value, I'll just add. I don't. <coughs> I don't know if I can support the full day of threes. That seems like the, that the we're getting into daycare. This well. is just for the four and fives, right? Oh, just there's, well, there's, no, there's, there's a, a three-year-old component too. Oh, that's for the threes. <coughs> mm -hmm. Right. That's I. That the two full days. I mean, I understand the fours because we're trying to balance a fifth day in the cost, but the threes, it's just, uh, to me, that's just getting excessive. That's but we would be offering an option, or at least exploring offering an option that would be less time, correct? I would be, I guess if you're looking for, and I, and I certainly <laughs> I understand where you're coming from there. I, I, I struggle with it a little bit myself. <coughs> and I, I guess I would... For tonight's purposes, I guess my four, the four and five program is the one that I really want you to support. Um, I would I would be okay with looking into the three year old program further. As to, as to I would feel more might, comfortable might to me to if you have kids who are only three in there. To me, it's it's a daycare. However, but it is voluntary. I know. It's voluntary. I know it is voluntary if parents want their child, children. <coughs> in right. the early threes. They right. don't have to. Absolutely. Well, I know like kindergarten. But the school is paying to take care of them for lack of a better way. You know. But I think it, it basically goes to the fact that you've mentioned a couple times being competitive and trying to maintain our students 
any way that we can, our enrollment. Yeah. And I think this is one way, I, especially I, since it's voluntary. I understand it. It's just that I just don't feel comfortable with it because I'm... Well, we have a lot of uncomfortable feelings with what we're doing in Chickagami. I mean, yeah. any different foot when we're hosting it? It's, that's my opinion. I mean, next year it'll be like, hey, let's do threes five days a week. Such a, it was so great. Yeah. And then the year after that, it's like, well, let's get the two-year-olds yeah, in I, here. I know Where we need we the pro I know we need the program. It just I feel right. like a three-year-old in school all day. <laughs> it's hard to keep him going for one or two hours focused on anything, let alone for all day. But I understand the reasoning behind it. Oh, I do too, and I'm not. I'm not saying the four and five is I'm a not problem. pushing away I'm the reasoning. That. I'm just saying if we should. There's a big difference a between a three-year-old and a four and five-year-old. Oh well. I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will move that we approve the proposed increase to school readiness three and the four or five early childhood programs. So let me just make sure I'm clear. You're proposing the entire package. Right. Thank you. I'll support that. Is there any further discussion? I can support the four and five, but I've had, I have. I don't know about the the, the three-year-olds. I, I understand everything that we're talking about. I do. It's just I have a hard time with that. I also have a hard time with the three-year-olds for the two full I days. I can understand it <coughs> reluctantly. I agree. I would just like to add that I, I fully support the program. Oh, yes. I think it's a great program. It is. We've, my family's participated in it, so, I mean, I'm going to vote against <coughs> this, but I just want everybody to know that it's the threes I just can't get past. Yeah, it has nothing to do with the program itself. <coughs> well, let's call this to a vote, and we can always entertain another motion if someone wishes to come forward with one. Tom, did you want to yeah, add does something? Yeah, does this, Jeff, actually put us in uh, line with the rest of the districts? Are they basically yeah. having the same programs? This as is where they're going, yeah. yeah. So we're, we'd be right in line with the rest uh, of the districts. I, underst I understand it. It's just, <coughs> yeah. yeah. Call a question. Yep. That's fine. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? No. No. All right. Let's do a roll call. <laughs> I want to make sure that I have the numbers correct. Four to three. I believe so. Mm -hmm. Director Chad? Aye. Director Shanlob? Nay. Yes. Director Forty? Thank you. Young? No. Peterson? Yes. And myself, yes. <coughs> Four to three yeah. in favor. I, I agree. I just no, wanted I to be sure no, that, no, I, no. that there was that's, no question. That's, I, that's why we do a roll call. To make sure. Right. I, I think it's a great no program. problem with that. We'll just leave it at that. <coughs> I support the program. It's just... I, it can still be discussed as we move forward. Um, well, okay. Thank you. 10.7, set a closed session to discuss negotiation strategies. So moved. Second. Young and 40 will continue and then uh, go into closed session. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. 11.0, superintendent's report. No. Yes. No? Committee reports. Oh, that's not on the, yeah. But that's on the agenda, it's not on the information sheet. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. I was going I off the agenda. <laughs> as long as you have yours in front of you, may I steal it? Sure. Thank you. Here, hold Thank that. you. Thank you. 11.0 committee reports. 11.1 .1, building and grounds committee. Well, um, there was a lot. <laughs> Just to say that we had nine items on the list and my notes are wherever, so I borrowed Mona's. So here we go. Uh, update on the air quality, the air balancing, there was a fresh air problem. Uh, Arrowhead from Twin Ports testing uh, did the testing. Um, was sh that's the consulting firm. Shelley, oh, that's this is Shelley Schreiber's room. room. That was the worst. That was in Gilbert? No. Yeah. No, okay, that, that was the worst. That one was. Uh, yeah. And it was tested while there were students in the room. They were concerned that yeah. that we were going to get um, 
incorrect readings if they tested an empty room, so they tested it while it was filled with kids. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have to try to understand your noise. I know. Different than mine. I know. Uh, and then with the science wing, um, initially it did not pass. Now it has passed. Uh, so that's been taken care of. And the Nell Sheen, the attics needed to be cleaned because the way that Brad explained it, that all the fresh air comes into the attics and it's sucked down into the heating system. They're, re re they're, uh, they're recycled. The recycled air, mm -hmm. and it's, we call it mixed air. Yeah. And the fresh air it mixes in the attics there. And then it gets sucked down into the fan unit back into the filters. Okay. So that needs to be done. Um, we got a price from uh, Service Master and from Arrow, A1 Arrowhead. Um, do, are we going to move on these tonight? Or are no. these just for information? That was an informational thing. Okay, well, uh, the prices were, needless to say, uh, far apart. We're, we're looking more into that. Yes, um, quite, a, quite a bit far apart. Okay. Uh, the junior high, um, the, one of the heating, no, one of the fans assemblies upstairs, the, that's for the, uh, the vents, the shutters. That's one that the bearings were bad. Oh, yes. for the that's air louvers, the that's what it is. High fan unit itself has got a bad bearing. Yep, and we got a price on repairing that. Um, so that would take care of that. We've got things going on that it's going to be t those things will be addressed uh, at a later date. But they are being looked at, and we have prices already on them, and uh, those are some of the projects for the summer. So, moving on the asbestos. Um, Evidently, we need to be, we need to upgrade our, our, our notes, our asbestos reports, as re, re, asbestos reports. We have to have a reinspection before we can do anything, <coughs> and we have never had one. Evidently, 2004, the books were 2004. 2004, and then the state now recognizes three years only. Okay, so we have so to have we another have one. So we have to have them updated, or we we'll have to get them updated. And that we're in the process. Of and we need to catalog everything of where the asbestos is in our district. Uh, that also includes the manual training, the, Ableth, the old Ableth Junior High, and the old bus garage. And we have also got a price on that. And we, are, we need to update our book, basically. That's what it's for. And that's for the, for the reinspection. Number three, which would be the summer <coughs> roofing projects. Uh, the front of the old senior high in Gilbert, I believe. Yep. Yes, the gym by the gym roof. Yep. And by the coal chute in the back between the two buildings, um, we got a price on getting those done. Uh, the media center skylights. Um, that was to re be repaired. We're gonna re we're looking at re-roofing the. Okay, media re roofing center. the whole area up there. Okay. <coughs> that roof is still ballasted. It's yes. It's the original roof. Um, and on the Eveleth walkway, I believe, between here over to the gymnasium, mm -hmm. should be done. Um, um, let's see where else. The, the, old Ev the old Eveleth Senior High School gym, the old gym. The, um, lock, the locker the room, room area above there is the one we have to do. Uh, after looking everything over up on the roof, we do not have to re-roof the whole thing. Right. It's in good shape. Yep. So we don't have to do that. We're saving money there. Um, we got uh, some quotes coming from the architect for the media center, the gym, and the walkway. Yep. So that's that one. Number four is the summer carpeting projects. We have some deferred maintenance uh, carpeting in the walkways. Uh, they're going to be in the school colors. Uh, the re they're going to recarpet the auditorium. We need a large, and we also need a larger vacuum for doing the walkway and the and the rugs. And uh, Brad obtained a price on that, which looks like a pretty good price. We'll be looking at that. Um, number five of some of our other summer projects, we have um, some concrete work outside of the Franklin by the handicap ramp. That's back by what most people call the old mudroom. Uh, that's on the north side of the building. There's also some uh, terrazzo repairs that have to be done at the Franklin. And uh, I think it was $1.85 a square foot for the coating and the 75 
cents a foot for the refinish, uh, and it averages around here. Is this is this the quote that they give us? The fourteen thousand? It's pretty close. To it's that. pretty that. So it's fourteen thousand dollars a floor. Yep. And the steps are more because there's more labor involved, because you have to do each step manually at a time. It takes longer. So they will be more cost to that, and Brad has come up with a plan over two years, three years? Three years. Three years to do a floor every year and do the stairway above. I would like to do the stairs from the second floor down to the yeah. first, Okay. from the third floor down to the second, and then on the third year we only have the trash on the, on the top, floor. On the top floor. So yeah. it would be actually yeah. a, a cheaper. Yeah, it would be a, a lot. It's easier, easier to budget that way too. Oh, okay. And also, there is a manhole issue. Is that one up by the football field? Yes. Yes, that's for the water, um, the watering system for the field. For the sprinkling system. Sprinkling and for the and okay. for the, uh, that, bathrooms. That needs to be excavated, rebuilt, so it's safer because the manhole, the safety rungs when you go climb down into the manhole, two of my gates are missing or rotted away. A little of both. A little of both. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're gone. They're gone. They're old. It needs to be done. And they, they, got a, they got a price on it. We're looking for it. We're going to be looking more into that, and it's something that will be done after school is out. Um, number seven is the bus garage. Uh, we found out that we can extend our existing bus garage, uh, and we do not have to do it uh, Company specific, I would say if it, if it was a Butler system before in the past, you used to have to have the Butler um, contractor come in and do the garage. You don't have to do that anymore. So we're looking at, at doing something with that. Um, also, you see the bus. We're looking at a preferred bus would be the Bluebird bus. Um, I think it's because of the sheet metal in it and also the doors and the floors in the openings where the doors are to let the kids out. In the past, the other ones have rotted away sooner than what the bluebirds have. So we're looking at a bluebird bus for that. Um, the gym floor, that's going to be refinished uh, in June after the graduation. Um, it was patched last fall. Brad's been doing a lot of uh, work on all this stuff, so having just jumped into this job, I think that he's done a, a good job of getting all this information for us. So thanks for jumping in the way he did. Uh, there's a lot of issues here, and we'll be taking <coughs> care of them as time goes on, but that's what we have. Thank you. Uh, one question is the uh, uh, the final <laughs> inspection ever passed on, uh, on that Gilbert Roof. There was supposed to be another inspection made or something? Is that Mr. Turner is actually working on that, I believe. Uh, there were some questions we had, didn't we, Jeff? And Ryan was <coughs> going to uh, check what uh, was it Nelson? Yeah, I just just met with him last Friday, so they're gonna we'll we'll have answers soon. It's been pretty much of an ongoing thing though. Yes, it has. Final inspection, I mean uh, I hear you. Do we have any oh. resolutions the last year? They, they did come up and the company came up and uh, and made repairs. It just hasn't been inspected. What do you mean? Finally. Like all the windows are gone, and that's already taken care of, right? Or is there? Well, that's a different. Project. Well, I mean, but it was all. I, I yeah. guess I don't. There was kind of last minute issues all like last year, and I've never. We, heard we still any have resolution. some open. We still have some open issues with the project as a whole. The windows are done. Okay. The roof is done. The it just hasn't been inspected. Uh, there are the uh, the two things that come to mind is the the security doors in the Franklin have not been done okay. and uh, and the uh, canopy over in Gilbert is not complete yet hmm. we're working on that we have not paid them <coughs> and that would be the final payment we're down to right we're down to the final payment I did talk to Mike Ralston, and he said that to finish the canopy part of this, uh, we had to be above 50 degrees for a couple days straight, 24 hours a day, so that the cement and everything. Cure. 
Yeah, I think we knew that we, it was going to be spring for the columns to get finished and such over there, but it was just there was other things holding other things up too, right? Right. <coughs> well, before the final payment is made, these are all going to be corrected they and will passed. All be, they'll all be corrected and passed. Yep. Well, yeah, they strung themselves out on that last payment, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we're caught up now. 12.0 superintendent's report. I just have a couple of things. One, I just wanted to give you a short update on uh, strategic planning. Um, we have been meeting as a, as a, as a school group working on the action plan. We've met for two nights now. We'll meet for one night uh, we'll again next Monday uh, after school to, to finalize our product at that time. Um, prob well, probably sometime this week I'll be setting up a meeting of the original Strategic Planning Committee to review all the things that we now have in place and kind of put that, compile that together and, and hopefully I'd say within the next two, three weeks we'll have a, we'll have some type of final draft that you can, you can peruse over. So it's, it's coming along nice. We've had great participation from the staff, good ideas. Uh, <coughs> and then the other thing that I, I wanted to do is, uh, Probably that first week of May, I'm looking at the, the 4th, uh, is a Monday. Oops. We need to set up a, a, our second budget and finance meeting to start putting some finishing touches on the 15, 16. The 4th, I'm sorry. So I guess, uh, let's see, how does... Uh, How does the sixth look that week for folks? Mm -hmm. That's a si uh, Wednesday? That's a Wednesday. Wednesday. Five o'clock. Should be. That works for me. Make okay. It. So we'll, we'll do that on uh, Wednesday the sixth. We'll have a budget finance meeting. Okay. At five. At five. And that's all I have. Okay, board member topics. Director Chad? I've got nothing. Shamal? Nothing. Mr. Ford? The only thing I have, and it's minor, um, as far as our extracurricular numbers and participation, we got a, something on that. Uh, I have asked the rec director to put together numbers of participation at the various ages for the sports that the rec uh, department sponsors basketball, flag football, hockey, that sort of thing. So we can get a picture from elementary through high school of what our participation is. That might not be ready for till toward the end of next month because of spring and summer signups going on now. So when he has those numbers, <coughs> then he'll put them together for the year. Because that is the theater program yes. for most of the high school <coughs> sports. So. Yes. Good. Dr. Young? Um, no, not at this time. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to ask, um, I read an article this weekend, Triple B superintendent lobbying efforts. Um, it was kind of vague on what that was about. I mean, has that been an ongoing thing that you can want to discuss or fill, well, us in in a, or fill me in? In a nutshell, uh, you know, there's the, the, when the three schools got together uh, last year and made an attempt at co-location, uh, out of that, there was a fund in the IRRB that was formed, and, and that is still there, regardless of the fact that co-location died. Right. Um, so obviously, people are going to be interested in, in that fund, and uh, so we we did it. Uh, it must have been last December. We we being the regional superintendents uh, met with some of our area legislators and asked, you know, what are we, what are what's going to be the criteria? How because there is no criteria, basically. Right, they just so what do, what do we need to do? And, and we were advised that we need to come up with a plan together. Um, they weren't going to entertain individual schools coming at them with requests. So, Like a, no, another not, attempt not, of a... Or I'm, not just talk, I'm not talking about co-location, consolidation, or anything. Because the way they, the article made it look is that everybody would get their share of the money. And, and that is correct. I mean, we were, we were, <coughs> what, what we felt they were asking for was... They wanted to. They wanted a plan for how each. They wouldn't. They wouldn't in, in, entertain a school coming forth and saying, "Hey, we want all of it." Right. They, they wanted to know how we were going to share. So collectively, uh, as a group, you guys. We decided how we, we were agreed going to share. All of us would get this. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. It's nothing's. We're <coughs> not. Nothing's been approved. No, and I kind of. 
did some phone calls and found out kind of what it was, but I guess it's been ongoing for a while, and I didn't know if it was they were trying to change it from the, a co-location project to more of an individual thing or not. It, yeah, we're looking at individual stuff, but it has to be. There has to be some, like I said, some equity and rationale for how it gets divided up, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, that's all. I just wanted to ask what that was about. Okay. Director Gentilini? Nothing. Yeah, I have nothing. <coughs> we'll go into closed session to discuss negotiation strategies and then come back and adjourn. Okay. Thank you.